To figure out whether this series converges or diverges, we are going to use the ratio test. How do I know that's the test I want to use? Well, there's a factorial in this series. Oftentimes, when there's factorials, the ratio test is a really good one to use, and you'll see why in just a second. So here we go. I guess we should start this series somewhere. Might as well be at 1. It could be at 2. It's not going to change the answer because convergence or divergence happens way down the road at infinity. So let's do this. The ratio test says it's the limit as n grows infinitely large of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1. What does that mean? That means everywhere I see an n, I will insert n plus 1. So I have to put in n plus 1 inside there. If I put an n plus 1 in here, that would be n plus 1 plus 1, or n plus 2 inside the factorial. And then it's all over a sub n. It's all over the original. So that's where my big fraction goes. The absolute value of that. So now we just have to compute this limit. Well, everything in here is already positive, so the absolute value sign is kind of redundant. I don't really need it anymore. But some problems you might need that, just know it's there for the ratio test. Now I have a fraction over a fraction. I might as well simplify that by multiplying by the reciprocal. So that'll look like this over n plus 2 factorial. And then that would be times the reciprocal of this bottom fraction, n plus 1 factorial over n squared plus 1. Hmm, how can we simplify this? How can we cancel it? Well, it's using the definition of factorials. You see, n factorial means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. You can count down as far as n goes. So n plus 2 factorial, well, that would be n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n times n minus 1. But what I'm really doing is I'm just peeling off that first layer. You see, n plus 2 factorial, as I was saying, is n plus 2. And then if I kept counting n plus 1, n, n minus 1 forever, as big as n goes, this that would be n plus 1 factorial. And so n plus 2 is simply multiplied by an n plus 1 factorial. And we do that so we can cancel those factorials out. Manipulating these factorials, dealing with them, happens a lot with these ratio test problems. So you'll want to get a hang of how these factorials work and operate together. Now that we have that, I can rewrite this limit. And maybe I'll take a second to expand this. n plus 1 squared, well, that would be n times n is n squared. I'd have n times 1, 1 times n would give us two n's. And then I'd also have plus 1 times 1 is 1, plus an additional 1 would be 2. All I did was expand this term and combine like terms. On the bottom, I have n plus 2 times n squared plus 1. n times n squared will give us n cubed. I'll have 2 times n squared to give us 2n squared. I'll have 1 times n to give us n. And then I'll have 2 times 1 to give us 2. And now what we have is what I would call a fairly straightforward limit problem. It's just a rational expression, a polynomial in the numerator, a polynomial in the denominator. The standard approach is to divide by the degree of the denominator. So I could divide every term by n cubed, we would get the same result. I just want to make it even easier for you. I'm going to use the rule of thumb. I've heard it called the garbage rule. I've also heard it called the highest powers do the talking. Basically, this limit will just come down to the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. And that's because we're taking limit towards infinity. At infinity, all that matters is the degree, the highest powers. Well, the power in the bottom is bigger than the highest power in the top. That would mean at infinity, as I keep growing, the bottom is growing faster. Since the bottom's growing faster, the fraction will get smaller and smaller, so this limit is zero. 
And what does the ratio test say? Well, I compare this number I get to 1. And since it's less than 1, the ratio test says that our series in question is absolutely convergent. Not just convergent, but if I throw absolute values on it, it will still converge. It's absolutely convergent by the ratio test. I hope you got something out of this video, and I hope you have a great day.